Shooting log is a great way to get the most out of your camera and to get the best possible image quality but you will need to do some editing to make your footage look nice otherwise it's just going to look muddy and desaturated. And to show you how to do that I'm going to correct some log footage in Final Cut Pro X 10.4 although these techniques will work in other programs like DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. I've got a Final Cut Pro X project here which has some footage from a short film I DP'd a while ago and we're going to be putting some colour corrections onto it. If you want to get this workspace here the color correcting grading workspace you just go window workspaces color and effects and I'm gonna use uh, hang on I found it I'm going to select this layout option because the RGB parade is the scope that I found the most useful and I'm gonna shrink the filters and effects over here so first of all, we're going to use color wheels, and color wheels can be found on the filter section tab. Go to the color and then color wheels and drag that onto your clip. Going to go into the color board here. This is actually not too bad. Firstly, I'm just going to bring the exposure down a little bit. This line here, which is zero, anything under that is pure black. If we take the footage below the line, the, you'd say that the shadows were crushed and that's not what I'm going for and really you shouldn't be doing that with a color correction phase, potentially in the grading phase but not whilst correcting. Over here we have the 100 line, anything above this is pure white. Now because we have these blown out windows here, there's, there's just no detail there. So these actually can be on the 100 line. If I had shot in RAW, then potentially we could bring some of the detail back from the windows, but it's not really necessary and I'm not, I haven't shot in RAW anyway, so it is purely hypothetical. I am going to bring the highlights down a little bit. I no, don't want to bring them below 100 too much, because if I do, they'll start looking a bit grey and a bit strange like that and you don't want your footage to look strange so I'm gonna leave them just at about the 100 line and that's really not too bad having a look at the midtones there are about right I am just gonna bring the midtones up slightly now that I've done that that has moved the shadows and the highlights so I'm gonna bring the highlights back down to a hundred and I'm going to bring the shadows not quite to zero but a little bit above it. When you're expanding your image you want to have a look at your frame and see is there anything that should be pure black or pure white. So this here it's fine for the levels to be very high because this is pure white but if there wasn't anything pure white in the frame then I wouldn't want the levels so high and the same applies for the shadows too. This is looking quite good now so the last step I'm gonna put a bit more saturation into the shot because that's another thing log does. Log does take some of the saturation out of your shot and you can apply it back in in post. And I think about there looks right. Coming down to the bottom here, the color temperature and tint and hue of the image, they're all not too bad. If they were off, I could alter the sliders here to put blue or orange in but I'm quite happy with it and if there was too much green or too much pink from the tint I could put that in here and the hue to just change the overall colour of the image but all of these settings look about right possibly a little bit of pink just a little bit of pink because I can see a bit of a green tint which I want to take out but that's probably a bit much so very subtle here and I'm happy with that, so we're going to move on to the next shot. For basic correction, this is pretty good. To give you a before and an after, this is before the color wheels, and this is after the color wheels. Still quite subtle, but for the correction stage, definitely good enough. This is an office scene. And now in the last shot here, we used the color wheels. Here we're going to use a combination of the color wheels and a LUT. The LUT filter can be found in the same place as the color wheels. We're going to drag that onto the shot. Come over to the inspector here 
and I am going to use a LUT for the Canon C100 Mark II. I should say that this is all Canon C100 Mark II footage shot in C-Log. This is a LUT pack by IWLTBAP. I'm sure it could have had a more catchy name, but anyway, it's a very good LUT pack. It has some utility ones for converting various types of log from different cameras, such as Sony Blackmagic into a more standard Rec. 709 look, and it has some LUTs that give your image a bit of a grade to whether you're trying to emulate film or some sort of other film. It's or some sort of a movie look rather. It's a really good pack. It's only like £20. I definitely recommend having a look at it if you're interested in using some LUTs. I'll put a link in the description of this video. So we're going to go to the utility Canon C log and we're going to select this one. Now immediately this has added some contrast into the shot and it's added a bit of saturation too and it's looking pretty good but it is a bit overexposed so I'm gonna select the color wheels bring the color wheels in now because this is a color correction I'm actually going to move the color wheels here so that they're affecting the image before the LUT is and the reason I'm doing this is because the LUT will affect the how bright and how dark the highlights and shadows can be and it will stop them going past certain values which is all good but I want to be controlling the footage before any of that happens, so we're going to have the color wheels first. So we're going to come into the color wheel controls, and I'm just going to bring the master brightness down a bit. But really, the shot here is not too bad, so... I think that looks about right. Now, if we look at this frame, there are quite a few bright things here, such as the labels, her shirt, and this wall in the background, but they're definitely not pure white, so I don't want the levels too close to pure white. There are some creases here, and they should be fairly close to the zero, but I am going to push them up just a little bit. Or well, maybe I might take them down a bit. I'm just going to... You want to be very gentle with color correction and color grading. If you overdo it, it ends up looking a bit strange, and that's not how you want your footage to be looking. I'm quite happy with how that looks. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, overall, I think that's quite good. The midtones are a little bit too high still so I'm gonna bring them down just a little bit more and that has also brought the shadows down so I'm just gonna push the shadows back up again and I think that's about right and I'm gonna just put the highlights up slightly now I'm quite happy with that so I'm just to give you a before and an after there's the color wheels bringing the exposure down and there's the LUT, adding in some contrast and saturation. For the past two shots, we have used color wheels, and we will be using color wheels in this at the end to add some saturation in, but to actually control the exposure and contrast, hmm, thought my computer had crashed there because the mouse stopped moving. No, it hadn't. I just moved my mouse off the edge of the mouse mat. Now we're going to select the color curves. We're going to add the color curves onto this shot, and we're going to go into the controls. This point here is the shadows, this point here is the highlights. I'm just going to drag the shadows down a bit. This is a very contrasty shot, so I'm not going to go quite to pure black, but I am going to push it quite close to about there. With the highlights, we have got a bit of detail above the pure white line, but we have this clipped window detail here, so I'm not too worried about that, and I am going to push the highlights a little bit further. There we go. For the basic contrast, this is all right, but the midtones aren't. I'm not entirely happy with them. And it's fairly simple. You can see the highlights. That's a point there, and the shadows. There's the point there. But there's no other points in this line for the midtones, and we have to add them in ourselves. So I'm going to put a point here. I'm just going to drag it up and move the point around and see whereabouts I want to have it. Now I do want to keep some of the contrast in, but I don't want the face to be in too much shadow. So I'm going to go around here. I'm actually going to bring this bit down a little bit, and I'm going to bring the darker end of the image down a bit 
two. That's a bit much. Again, you want to be nice and subtle. I'm actually going to dial back down my mid-tone adjustment a bit because I think that's a bit too much. So here we have a before and an after. There's some good, good contrast in here. And I'm actually now seeing that this uh, jumper here, it's gone a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to pull a bit of brightness back into the shadows, but not too much. And that's pretty good for the contrast. And now we're going to add the color wheels back in to this shot. And we're just going to use them to add some more saturation in. About there looks good. So to do a before and an after. First of all, we're going to add some contrast and gamma, and then we add some saturation in. Now, if I were to be grading this shot, I would apply my color grade, and then I'd actually come back and probably adjust the correction a little bit, depending on how the skin tones and the shadows came out. But for a basic correction layer, this is definitely good. I am happy with it. You do want to be careful not to push the shadows too far with the color curves, because already, I can see a little bit of noise and compression artifacts coming in, even though this was shot in ProRes. So there's there's a lot you can do in post, but you just you have to be careful not to push the image too far. In the future, I am going to do some color grading tutorials where you play around with the colors a bit more and give your footage a stylized look. If that sounds interesting and something that you don't want to miss, then be sure to subscribe, and if you found this video useful, then leaving a like would be much appreciated. See you later.